uh, hello everyone today um, I will show you how to create the stylized uh, water material uh, so you can see here and uh, the main idea here is to create the some kind of uh, stylized look uh, of the water uh, the transparency, the shadows uh, and some kind of depth so today we will focus on those details and how we can create uh, this effect in Substance Designer so if you ju will look uh, on the reference uh, obviously the realistic water is uh, having some kind of uh, uh, important details so we will uh, concentrate uh, on those details but with stylized look so uh, as you can see here there are some kind of bubbles uh, uh, the uh, waves uh, that are uh, having some kind of uh, flow um, uh, the uh, waves are uh, having some kind of the curvature around uh, there are some kind of peaks uh, and highlights you can see here uh, there is some kind of the transparency in between and uh, as you can see uh, there are some kind of shadows that are uh, going on the bottom of the river for example uh, that uh, the shadows are coming from the peaks of the waves so this is basically that's it uh, there are some kind of small details uh, and as you can see uh, the uh, waves uh, they are uh, going uh, around the bubbles uh, this is uh, really important and I will show how to uh, achieve uh, this effect um, so the main idea that all those details they need like to live uh, which each other uh, and yeah so it will uh, create some cohesive look that you will see here uh, so the materials is looking uh, the material is looking like this um, so as you can see there are some kind of uh, reflectivity but uh, it's not uh, uh, so the material is not too reflective like a mirror for example uh, I uh, wanted to create more like a matte uh, surface so the water that uh, maybe you can see in uh, League of Legends or uh, Dota, uh, so it's not too shiny, too glassy, you know. So th this was like the main idea here, and this is more some kind of uh, uh, more more like still water of the maybe the water of the river or something like this. Um, and uh, the main idea is to get some kind of flow uh, because um, of course you can animate uh, uh, using the uh, proper shader uh, the flow uh, uh, animate the flow of the waves and the bubbles uh, it will be really cool but in case if you are uh, working or on uh, more like simple uh, mobile game for example uh, the water is uh, static and on static image you need to create some kind of illusion of the movement that's why uh, the flow uh, of the uh, waves and uh, the flow of the highlights is really really important in this material so that's said let's um, start to explore the graph uh, so the first step is to create the simple uh, like the structure of the wave uh, and uh, to create it I'm using the tile sampler uh, you can see here with uh, some kind of parameters uh, the shape uh, really is not uh, too important but in my case I found out that like the uh, rectangles uh, rectangles uh, they are suited uh, best f for the effect that I want to achieve uh, the uh, after is coming the node distance and uh, I input uh, from the tile sampler outputs into the uh, mask input and source input. In this case, uh, you will get uh, this effect, uh, and already you can see that it's more like uh, or less 
is some kind of the uh, wave structure of the water. Uh, the next step is uh, edge detect and you can see here the lines are pretty straight so uh, we need like to bubble it uh, more uh, to create more curvature. Uh, but before we are using uh, blur high quality grayscale to just uh, decrease the aliasing you can see here uh, on the lines so the blur high quality grayscale is doing our job here and uh, after leveling it a little bit uh, uh, here I'm creating uh, more like uh, smooth uh, thin lines uh, yeah so it's um, a more softer look Okay, let's uh, begin to work on the shape of our lines and we are using here the warp uh, and for the uh, gradient input I'm using a blurred image that is coming from the distance. So you can see I blurred it a little bit and warp it. So uh, here I'm using um, this method because uh, it's uh, it's like the uh, combined, uh, how to say, the combined effect that is using like the starting point of the like uh, static waves, and after I using this uh, grayscale information to warp uh, the lines that uh, I got uh, from the edge detect, I will get this kind of effect. So you can see here, for example, uh, the uh, white zone, uh, bright white zone um, or bright grey uh, and it is uh, blurred on edges uh, so this will pull the pixels outside and I will get this nice curvature around uh, so it's uh, quite an uh, amazing effect I think <laughs> so I found uh, it after a couple of uh, different iterations and experiments and the good thing uh, here is that I can create uh, already bubbles uh, and uh, if you will experiment with the warp just uh, messing with the parameter you can create more bubbles or less and the good thing that I can create the bubbles already uh, in between all the waves so this is some kind of uh, cool effect so you can see I can just move it and the bubbles are growing uh, or less effect the bubbles are just disappearing you see so it depends on the effect that you are wo uh, want to achieve um, so n uh, the next step uh, in other warp uh, for now I'm using uh, just a standard node uh, parallel noise and I'm uh, warping uh, everything so you can see the difference uh, here there are some kind of uh, straight lines uh, and after all those uh, straight lines are uh, just uh, curved uh, so it's more like uh, organic look. Uh, the next uh, step is the directional warp uh, with uh, parallel noise uh, with those parameters and here with the directional warp it's a nice one if you want to add some kind of uh, directional warping uh, for your texture that's why I'm using uh, here the directional warp uh, okay so the uh, next step is uh, warping our waves uh, around the bubbles and I will quickly show you how I created uh, the bubbles uh, this is um, a really basic stuff I started from the shape uh, a parboloid uh, pattern uh, plugged uh, it into the pattern input in tile sampler just scattered uh, the bubbles around uh, using uh, different sizes you can see here and uh, max uh, blending so you see this is a pretty cool effect you can see here uh, the bubbles are intersecting it's quite interesting um, yeah so the bubbles are look like this so it's pretty simple stuff and I'm using the uh, height map 
as the uh, gradient input into the verb. So it's uh, basically a really common uh, workflow. Uh, for example, it's really common when you are uh, creating wood, for example, uh, when you are uh, uh, using uh, some kind of the deformations on the wood, uh, so the strains of the wood are curving around those deformations. Uh, it's basically the same workflow, but I'm using like the bubbles to curve the wave because obviously the wave is moving and it is intersecting and the bubbles are coming uh, in between of the waves. Yeah, I think <laughs> you get it. Um, so as you can see after the warp, uh, uh, here we will have some kind of noise. And this is the biggest difference between uh, directional warp and simple warp, that simple warp is adding some kind of the noise, so we need like, to blur it a little bit. Uh, sometimes I'm using a direct a directional warp uh, instead of a standard warp uh, uh, to just uh, eliminate uh, those uh, artifacts. Uh, but in, in this case Standard warp is working just fine, that's why I'm using it uh, here. Uh, yeah, after the blur, uh, I'm going through the histogram scan and just reinforcing uh, the softness uh, lines of the wave. Uh, the next step is uh, blend, and I'm blending uh, parallel noise uh, as the foreground with the um, background. Uh, with our lines uh, of the waves uh, using a blending mode screen. So uh, I'm getting here the effect. Uh, so those lines are uh, really uniform, uh, more like comic lines, but I want like a little bit of the variation. That's why I'm adding like the uh, parallel noise uh, on top of it uh, to just uh, to just balance uh, and add some uh, variety. Uh, again, I a little bit blur it, and here add the curvature node to just to to see how the uh, waves uh, are looking. And here I'm uh, using the levels. Just y you can see here, if you just see, uh, there is some kind of the uh, like uh, bottom part and top uh, part and here I can uh, use uh, the levels just to get only this uh, top part. Uh, I know it's uh, some kind of uh, inverted uh, but uh, let's see as this is like the not top part, uh, it's more like a shadow for example and using the levels I can get basically the mask for now it's inverted but for the shadows and I blurred it a little bit too so uh, this uh, is um, uh, coming to the height blend and you can see uh, this is basically the overall height and I will just show quickly uh, in a minute, uh, in a second, I'm sorry how I created it, it's pretty simple, but uh, here you can see that I have like the uh, 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 yes, I think it's more like uh, highlights uh, for the waves that are coming up a little bit, so you can see here uh, there is effect, so the waves they are coming a little bit uh, uh, a little bit uh, higher than the uh, water surface and maybe to increase this effect and showcase a little bit more uh, you can c create uh, the uh, softish plant but uh, actually I played uh, with it a lot and uh, uh, I thought maybe to uh, create uh, the gaps uh, in between the waves that um, the water will look uh, more like a rough uh, surface with uh, more high peaks for the uh, waves but uh, it 
it was looking too destructive and uh, as I said before the main idea here is to create a really calm water but with small movement of the bubbles and uh, those shapes uh, that's why uh, I just stopped here and I think for me it's it's working uh, yeah but uh, there is uh, room to play with this effect too so uh, to create uh, basically the uh, uh, height map uh, for the surface of the water I'm using uh, after the directional warp invert gray scale and distance mode so I think uh, uh, there is another method more clean uh, because I'm not really like um, these uh, artifacts uh, and I played with the uh, blurring and other stuff but uh, the lines uh, they are uh, so they are still present and I really don't like how the distance uh, node is working here and it is does not uh, matter are those lines soft or like anti-aliasing but yeah but still it is uh, uh, some kind of working for me because I want to get the depth uh, inside uh, of the um, I will say inside of the uh, this part of the wave uh, so basically the water is coming down the wave is coming up down up down uh, so this is basically the effect that I want to achieve here and maybe you can create it using with the flood node um, flood fill node but I will show you here uh, why it's not working uh, for me because uh, sorry uh, we will invert this one to so uh, obviously you can see uh, where uh, the balls uh, are inside the wave uh, there is uh, some kind of the artifacts and overall mm, you can see mm, the effect is uh, buggy and uh, not really workable so that's why here I, I uh, maybe there are some kind of workarounds, but it will be too long to fix this. So that's why I was using uh, the distance node because uh, for me it was much quicker. And sometimes you need uh, to use uh, maybe not too efficient uh, way to create uh, the effect that you want uh, to achieve, but maybe um, uh, the uh, node that is uh, working for you um, better and uh, the steps uh, are not uh, and uh, the steps to achieve the effect uh, it's not too, uh, too too complex you know uh, so yeah uh, obviously we can't use uh, this effect for the water that's why I'm using uh, non uniform blur and it is uh, doing pretty nice job for me so it is definitely uh, blurring uh, the uh, harsh line in between and blurring uh, the inside uh, depth uh, of the wave uh, I know there are some kind of strains but surpri surprisingly it is looking uh, not too bad it is, uh, as you can see, is creating some kind of really subtle waveness uh, and yeah, I'm pretty like uh, happy with it. Uh, yeah, so it it is uh, creating some kind of the variety of the surface. Really subtle. Um, so after this step, uh, I'm blending, uh, as I said before, the peaks of the waves with this. Uh, uh, height map of the water surface uh, and the next step I'm adding just bubbles using the height blend again um, with these uh, parameters so you can check it <coughs> so this is basically that's it for the um, height map you can see the normal um, how it is looking and there are some kind of uh, 
like lines and uh, small artifacts from our height map but uh, it is uh, creating for me I don't know it is it is still working it is creating some kind of flow of the water those small artifacts and I'm pretty like happy with it uh, but yeah mm, you can experiment and uh, maybe create uh, more depth uh, or more softish uh, transition so I get the uh, normal map here and uh, yeah but basically it's not enough to for the texturing because as uh, you can see on the uh, diffuse map there are kind uh, some kind of layering and I need to create the uh, shadows uh, for the uh, waves and another like uh, uh, how to say another variations uh, for the uh, waves uh, but at the end I didn't used uh, for example you can see here I have uh, like the uh, this uh, surface of the water and after I'm adding another uh, waves you can see I will add it here and for me it's uh, too much uh, I think but it is adding some kind of layering but yeah it's uh, I think too much uh, is happening here that's why I just uh, not used uh, this effect I think it's more it's more clean looking um, so but uh, I, I still show you how I created uh, those uh, waves in case if you want to experiment uh, obviously it's like just the another uh, layer of the waves and I'm using the same uh, pipeline I'm just scattered, scattered uh, rectangles uh, a little bit of the other way but uh, the other uh, like workflow is uh, the same I will just scroll it quickly just to uh, show you so you can see I'm basically uh, creating another really interesting uh, waves pattern uh, and just uh, warping it, uh, warping directional warping and uh, blur it um, so yeah I'm blur it here uh, histogram scan it to increase the contrast of the lines uh, again blend it, invert it uh, and uh, blur it again so yeah this is uh, for the uh, second pass of the waves I used here so maybe we can uh, maybe test without the blur how it is looking maybe it will add something for us uh, no I think it's still still too busy but maybe you can maybe like play yeah this is something interesting but maybe not too uniform so yeah you can maybe play with the mm, this is some kind of interesting more contrast uh, shadows um, this is nice okay let's leave it like this so it will add more like uh, more shadows maybe yeah so definitely you can see that um, I was not using but uh, we just experimented a little bit and now I'm using it so why not um, but uh, the main idea you need to understand here is uh, never use like uh, one set of the waves uh, uh, more variety you can create more believable effect you will get and less uh, procedural it will look at the end so that's why here I'm using like uh, two waves and here uh, again uh, the uh, shadow waves basically the uh, the process is the same but uh, with the another uh, tile sampler uh, variations so I will get something like this at the end again some kind of small bubbles small variations and I have like the mask so as uh, those waves uh, they are not gener generating for me some kind of normal maps that's why uh, those two uh, uh, waves uh, generators uh, at the end I'm getting uh, the mask uh, because it uh, uh, the mask is using only for the diffuse and for the roughness it's uh, so 
uh, it's not uh, blending with the uh, height map as you can see here. So basically the normal map is just uh, the bubbles, the surface of the water and the peaks of the waves. That's it. Uh, and I'm uh, generating a really subtle occlusion from the height map. Um, yeah, so basically we checked everything that is coming for the masks uh, and for the height map. Uh, and now really quickly, as you can see, it's not uh, too complex. Uh, let's check the diffuse map. Um, so we have our uh, height map. I think I transform it. Uh, let's check it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think maybe I rotate it or flip it. I really do not remember. But uh, yeah, I I did it and go th through the. Let's see. Okay. Ah, I see. Yeah. So just to create the simple mm, just to create the simple uh, base texture I used the previous uh, node height map without bubbles just transform it a little bit and uh, uh, edit the gradient map just uh, using only two colors you can see here so for the depth it is uh, adding me some kind of greenish uh, bl blue uh, uh, water depth and on the peaks I have more like um, navy bright uh, blue uh, color and uh, definitely you can see that only using just uh, my height map and only two colors in gradient map I already get uh, I already got uh, a really interesting result so I really recommend you to just not pick the colors from the picture and uh, using as less colors as you can uh, it's not uh, depend o on the style you are creating uh, really if you are creating realistic texture still uh, I think less colors you are using the less confusion or less noisy the result will be um, yeah so is some kind of the approximate uh, appro approximal uh, colors that you can pick up just yeah, yeah uh, using the reference uh, and eyeball uh, the colors so the next step is adding shadows and shadows are coming from the uh, wave shadows uh, mask that I created here you can see uh, it's uh, so as soon as it's like fantasy, it's not like the science, uh, the shadows are not really necessary need to uh, to repeat the main shape. Uh, so because um, it will create more interesting look uh, when I created, uh, just duplicated the main shapes of the wave and just offset it a little bit and created the um, shadows it was looking too generic and not really interesting and as soon as the water is really quickly um, uh, moving uh, I think uh, the some kind of the variety in shadows is really nice so it's uh, for me it's creating uh, some kind of interesting movement and some kind of interesting pattern and uh, yeah not necessarily it's uh, realistic looking Okay, after the shadows, I'm using, uh, by the way, the soft light here with uh, opacity. Uh, again, the mask, the previous node, and the color on top. Uh, this is the another layer of the shadow uh, we just added. Um, so the next step, I'm using the mask. Uh, so we have the waves, I uh, histogram it uh, and invert it to get the mask 
with some kind of the variety and here you can see uh, so I just histogrammed the uh, blackest part of the waves uh, so it will be like peaks of the waves and I got the mask and the information from the mask is coming to the uh, 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 base color and here you can see it is at the same time as going to the roughness and uh, you see here it's uh, more towards to the uh, darker color because uh, I wanted uh, the peaks of the waves are catching lights uh, so uh, that's why it is uh, towards to black here so after the tops uh, peaks of the wave uh, I'm having the next uh, uh, step is blend node uh, using this mask and this mask is coming from the original um, pattern of the waves I just um, blurred it, uh, inverted it and blend it uh, with parallel noise again to add uh, some kind of the variety but the effect that I want to get here you can see it's really really subtle I'm not really sure you can hear you can see here but uh, this is just uh, some kind of blurry variation that is going around the wa waves using this uh, bluish uh, color it is adding uh, for me the depth and the color variation uh, maybe like the shadowing inside the uh, water um, itself uh, not on the ground uh, so it's uh, pretty nice to have uh, different uh, colors with different intensity uh, so it is adding some kind of uh, so in some places some kind of glow glowish effect uh, and depth uh, so it really adding uh, it's really subtle you see here is some kind of glow um, here th there is some kind of depth uh, in this blue color and the last step is adding bubbles mm, and for the bubbles I'm using this gradient map uh, for some reason I decided to go with the pink bubbles I think it's really uh, adding interest uh, just uh, balancing this uh, cold blue color with this more warm uh, bubble because the warm light is catching uh, and is uh, moving inside the bubble uh, yeah, and I'm just thinking it's looking cool. <laughs> uh, so the gradient map uh, is coming from the height map with the bubbles. So as you remember here I used the height map without the bubbles and I get uh, got this result and here with the bubbles. Uh, so the mask for the bubbles um, it is created again from the uh, uh, height map um, yeah no, sorry from uh, not from the height map but uh, from the height mask uh, so uh, and the good reason to use a new height blend mode because uh, when you are blending uh, two uh, height maps uh, you can get uh, for free the mask uh, of blending in my case I'm blending here the height map of the water and the bubbles uh, height map and I'm getting the uh, mask where the bubbles are catching uh, sorry intersecting in value with the height map of the water so yeah I'm having here the bubbles nice small bubbles um so sorry uh, here I have bubbles but the last step is adding uh, a little bit of the depth and highlights you can see the difference and I'm using the overlay with this opacity and using the gradient map basically uh, sorry uh, the curvature is smooth and after I'm using the gradient map uh, because uh, I need need to convert uh, the grayscale to the uh, color output and using it for the blending. So 
as you maybe remember from the previous tutorials, I really love to use uh, curvature smooth as the last note for the blending because it is adding the last. You see, this is more like the flat albedo, and this is more like uh, more. Like I, I'm adding a little bit of the depth to my texture. So this is the final albi uh, albedo or base color. Um, and uh, the last step we need to create the roughness map so still um, as I am creating uh, the uh, material for the PBR uh, sharing uh, I need to create all the uh, maps for the output uh, that's why the roughness is uh, really critical here because uh, this map is really what is ad adding the life for the uh, for the texture itself um, so how the bubbles are catching the light and other stuff yeah. so the roughness uh, I'm uh, taking the height map for the water uh, histom histogram range it uh, you see it's more like towards to bright gray because as I said I don't want to be too uh, reflective for example like this you see it's more looking like a uh, glass or mm, not glass uh, frozen water uh, I'm not really sure that I really want this effect and to be honest I never saw this effect in like uh, uh, MOBAs or like RPGs uh, stylized games uh, the water is painted as it is painted it's uh, painted more like a matte surface that's why uh, is more in important the uh, the colors and the structure of the wave and the basically the painter look uh, so here we are using uh, this kind of uh, value for the roughness uh, the next step I'm adding again but but at the same time uh, we uh, need to uh, create the roughness with the logic uh, so as soon as the shadows are catching the bottom of the river uh, and it is not uh, too reflective uh, that's why it's white uh, but the waves on top uh, are towards to darker color because it's uh, the waves are catching the light especially the uh, peaks uh, the rims of the uh, waves and of course the bubbles they are most uh, clean and most reflective uh, surfaces so that's it this is for the uh, roughness map and occlusion as I said yeah so here I have the output for the emissive but I, I didn't use it uh, at the end but uh, I think you can create some kind of emission for the peaks of the wave it will create another uh, layer of the interesting look and variation um, so let's see the result uh, this is the albedo map um, this is the normal map roughness height map and occlusion so that's it guys uh, hope it was useful uh, and uh, thank you for all the support and likes and especially the comments uh, it's really great that I can see that people are found uh, my tutorials are interesting and uh, uh, now I have the patreon uh, so you uh, will see the link in this in the description uh, so if you want you can just uh, go to my patreon page and support me uh, if you want uh, so maybe uh, in the future uh, if I will have more uh, time uh, maybe I will do something interesting uh, with my uh, 
patron uh, uh, guys and girls <laughs> um, so but it will be in the future uh, and maybe I will try to expand it somehow but not really sure how for now um, but yeah it's uh, another like resource to support the channel and I'm really appreciated for uh, any help it will definitely help to grow the channel and uh, yeah thanks guys for tuning in and uh, stay with me uh, if you have any questions just ask in the comment section uh, and I think the uh, next tutorial will be about the uh, stylized uh, look uh, soil uh, and still uh, I have plans to do maybe stylized stones uh, and wood uh, and I know it was uh, highly um, asked uh, me to create stylized wood and uh, I'm uh, I have like uh, one material in work so I will try to uh, finish it and uh, to create the tutorial from it um, yeah but for now it's the water and thanks guys for your time guys uh, for your time uh, and see you in the next tutorial bye bye have a nice day